Hey everybody, it's Adam from Chipper Glass, and it's Show Me Your Tool Saturday. I had this idea. I wanted to bring myself to my customers. I wanted to start educating them with what I do, what we do as Chipper Glass, and what the tools we use are. So I thought, you know what, why not every once in a while bring a tool out and explain what it is and what it does. So, here we go. Yeah, he is just such a lover. Just such a lover, yes you are. Yes you are. Oh yeah. Come on, bud. Come on. Hey, what time is it, everybody? It's hammer time. Spring hammer time. Let me show you what this little tool is. This tool is about 50 bucks. Well worth it. Let me show you. Okay, so what kind of damage do we repair at chipper glass? Well, we repair rock chips, short cracks, and long cracks. That's the sum of it right there. What are they? Let me show you the difference. Hang on. Rock chips. When rock or debris, anything, comes and damages your windshield, let's show you some prime examples. All right. So this right here, that's a rock chip. We have an impact point here and then the broken glass underneath the surface. See that, if I press a little bit, see how those little cracks aren't there? But if I press, focus here, if I press just a little bit, look at that. See that? It's not a lot of pressure right there. So imagine hitting bumps, changing of temperatures. Yikes, okay, that can take off. Um, over here, here's another rock chip. Sometimes they have pretty appearances, almost like uh, like wings, angel wings or bat wings. See that? Another rock chip. Damn it. There's an impact point. Impact point. There's glass there. You can have rock chips that are as small as this puppy here because there's damage on the inside. It is, it is kind of coned out in there. And there's black. That's air. It can be a small one like this. Now, some people mistake this as a rock chip. This technically is not a rock chip. This is only a pit because it's damaged to the windshield a little bit. Something came up and hit it, but it's not underneath. It hasn't gone below the surface, okay? So this, this would not be covered by insurance. I mean, we most certainly can come and put some pit filler on there just to make it nice and smooth so that the wiper blade doesn't streak water across. Okay, I mean, that is a pit, but not a real chip, okay? Where we have damaged subsurface. A short crack is technically up to six inches, and a long crack is greater than six inches. This is just a practice windshield where we have a lot of, a lot of long cracks on it. Anything over 14 inches, you know, we recommend you get replaced. All right. Cracks are different than rock chips. Rock chips, the damage is, other than the impact point, is underneath the surface. Long cracks, the damage the, is actually on the top. You can feel a little nudge here, a little ridge. So this is exposed to the outside. This is exposed to the outside by the impact point, but the damage is exposed, it's in the inside. Oops, sorry. Sometimes, these rock chips will have these radiating legs off of them. See that little leg there? This other one here, there's little fine lines there. And I don't know if you can see this, but watch me press. There's one right here. It comes all the way down to here. All right. Sometimes drilling, getting rid of some of that broken glass, drilling in there, and what we call popping it will help some of these little legs, if they're, they might be pinched off or not connected here, that'll help open that up so that we can get the resin down, down through them. What do I mean, popping a mini bullseye? I'll show you. So the key here is to drill halfway through the first or the outer layer of glass. And I'm doing all this to show you a cool tool that I have. 
we'll need to do this technique for terminating long cracks too because where the, the crack comes and where it stops it is so fragile and a lot of times it'll want to run very easily with uh, shifting pressures with shifting temperatures okay so what we have to do because that crack is external on top of the surface we literally have to push it to go subsurface which is what I'm doing here by we drill the hole with our Dremel we take this little puppy it's really cool on the end here in order to be very consistent let's see if you can see it see that little nub on the end there that is a depth gauge you can do it just by feel or, or by approximation of, of where you are in your bit but that actually tells how deep you're drilled into the first layer of glass. Remember, windshields, three layers. There's a layer of glass, approximately a yeah, quarter of an inch thick. And then you have laminate, which is a PVB, polyvinyl butyl, sticky laminate basically. And then behind that, on the inside of your vehicle, you have your second layer, just like your outer layer. Okay, so we're going through, halfway through our first layer of glass. Here's where I drilled. Check on my depth gauge. Yep, she's coming flush to the glass. So that's in, enough, in far enough. Okay, I love it because you can have the set depth because you can drill consistently to the right depth. This thing presses out, pulls out, and the tip here, we put that in the hole that we just drilled and you just gently press here and all it does is a light little tunk. Watch, let's see if we can do this one-handed here. I'm gonna put that in. And I'm gonna come up to my little trigger here. I pulled it back. Let's see if you can watch this Papa Mini. That's what we call Papa Mini. Come on, focus. There we are. Beauty. So that is a mini bullseye. Okay, and if we had a crack run in here, we would do that and force the crack subsurface. I have a video that I did a few weeks ago just kind of showing that with a real long crack. I'll show right. you. So the key is to drill away from the leading edge, pop a little mini bullseye, and force this long crack, which is external, back down subsurface to this bullseye. Watch. It's there. Watch when I push. See that? She's there. So she is connected. Could I do it without this tool? Yes. Some uh, some old dogs they use like uh, like a sewing needle, and they'll they'll tap it with uh, anything they got in their kit. You know, something hard, just something firm. And I wanted to be consistent. And I know after years and a decade or two of it, you know, you still could be consistent with your sewing needles and everything else too. Everybody has their own way. But I wanted to be able to be reproducible if we ever hire extra people in the future. It's worth it to be consistent. So this is the spring hammer. Just showing you a little tool that we have here. One of the tools. <laughs> All right. Catch you later.